This video will show you that there's much more to Graceland than what you've probably seen before. If you haven't visited yourself, this video is not only a comprehensive introduction to the home of the king, but will also reveal many of Graceland's little-known secrets and fascinating facts, hand-picked by me from dozens of reliable sources. We weren't huge fans before we went, but now we have a newfound love and appreciation of Elvis Presley and his incredible life and achievements. It's now or never to put on those blue suede shoes and continue watching as we take care of business and I know what you're thinking. A little less conversation, a little more action, please. Oh, sorry, okay, that's the last pun, I promise. Let's go. Welcome to Graceland, the 1939-built 14-acre estate that a 22-year-old Elvis Presley purchased in 1957 just as his stratospheric rise to global stardom was taking off. Costing US dollars Graceland was already called Graceland. Today, Elvis is more popular than ever and it is second only to the White House as the most visited home in the US with around half a million visitors per year. Helen and I were lucky enough to visit in June 2022 on an extremely quiet day and had the mansion pretty much to ourselves, so let's go inside. Please be aware that video recording inside the mansion is strictly prohibited and I didn't feel like having my collar felt and my kid's inheritance taken away by some undoubtedly powerful lawyers representing Elvis Presley Enterprises, but I did manage to get some incredibly beautiful stills which is allowed. Just pretend they're moving, okay? Your first steps into Graceland will be the entrance hall where you can view Elvis's living room, dining room, the main stairs and his parents' bedroom. Elements of decor you see in these rooms today span all of Elvis's eras at Graceland, but the look is primarily the late 60s, early 70s version, and in particular 1974, the year in which he did quite a big refurb. To your immediate right as you enter the mansion is the living room, and further through is the 17 by 14 feet music room. In 1974, Elvis remodeled this room into what you see today. Large custom-made wall mirrors were added to the fireplace wall and the entire east wall. The entry to the 17 by 14 foot music room is adorned with matching peacocks custom created by Laukuff Stained Glass of Memphis. He chose the peacock design as they symbolized eternal life and resurrection in ancient Christianity. You can see to the right a custom built 15 foot sofa and a 10 foot coffee table. The sofa was originally a metallic blue when it was first bought in 1957, but Presley later had it reupholstered in white. What you don't see is that in the second drawer of that white cabinet to the left, is a samurai sword. Nope, nobody knows why it's there and what Elvis hid it there for. If you know, please leave us a comment. Through into the music room is another television set in view beside the grand piano, the very first piano Elvis bought for the mansion in 1957. The painting that hangs in the room was Elvis's last Christmas present from his father Vernon. Opposite the living room off the main hall is the dining room, which features round curio cabinets in the north end corners and black marble flooring in the centre with carpet around the perimeter. It was reported that Elvis sat at the head of the table because it gave him one of the best views of the TV that's over to the corner on the right. And there's also a button under the table where he could ring the kitchen if they needed more food. According to our audio guide, Lisa Marie Presley, Elvis's only child, still to this day uses this dining room to entertain guests when she's visiting Graceland. Behind the dining room is the kitchen, which was not open to the public until 1995, as Elvis's Aunt Delta used it until her death in 1993. As you can see, the kitchen is carpeted and the original carpet Elvis specified in 1974 is still there. The microwave is the very first one in Memphis too, Elvis's favourite meals included lots of southern fried food that he was brought up on, and also the famous peanut butter and banana sandwiches that were fried in the actual skillet you can see on the hob to your left. On the other side of the hall opposite the kitchen at the rear of this floor is a bedroom which was occupied by Elvis's beloved parents Vernon and Gladys, which is perfectly preserved and the wardrobes still contain Gladys's clothes. We can peer up the stairs, but the second floor of Graceland is strictly off-limits to visitors. Presley's master suite up there was his most private refuge, where only his closest confidants were allowed to enter. It was the bathroom in there that Presley's body was found on August 16th, 1977. After the home was opened to the public in 1982, the second floor was sealed shut out of respect for the family, but also to avoid any macabre attention to the scene of his death. Behind the kitchen is one of Elvis's favourite rooms, nicknamed the Jungle Room by fans only after the mansion was open to the public, although never actually referred to as such by Elvis himself. 
The room reminded Elvis of Hawaii, where he made several movies in the 1960s. The extension was added in the mid-60s and is full of tiki furniture, plants, green shag carpets on the floor and the ceiling, and an internal waterfall, which Elvis never managed to get working properly, so he just stuck a big TV in front of it. The carpet and furnishings made the room pretty soundproof, and in 1976 the Jungle Room was converted into a recording studio where Elvis recorded the bulk of his final two albums. These were his final known recordings in a studio setting. Let's go down to the basement where there are two fascinating rooms where Elvis spent a lot of time. First of which is the TV room which features a drinks bar. After reading that President Lyndon Johnson had three television sets to allow him to watch all three major network news programs at once, Presley took the idea for his room. The room's south wall has three built-in television sets, a stereo and cabinets for Elvis's record collection. The decor also features a lightning bolt adorning the west wall. In the 1970s, Elvis branded himself with this motif, taking the motto TCB, meaning taking care of business in a flash. Hence the lightning bolt and the name of his musical backup group, the TCB Band. See the pewter tankard in the top left corner? It is inscribed to Elvis Presley from Arthur in England. He liked to keep fan gifts, and if you are Arthur from England, your gift has been immortalised here. The other room in the basement is the billiard room. Presley borrowed the rather overwhelming decor for this room from a painting of an 18th century billiards room. I suspect this is not a room for people with hangovers or chromophobia. Elvis was an avid billiards player and he bought the pool table in 1960. In one corner of the pool table there's a rip in the felt caused by one of Elvis's friends in a failed attempt of a trick shot. Probably became an ex-friend. Odd that he never got it repaired though, not like he couldn't afford it. I don't have chromophobia but I really need to get some natural daylight so let's go outside to the rear of the mansion where there are several interesting buildings and areas. While it was Colonel Tom Parker who managed Elvis's career, it was Elvis's father Vernon Presley who managed his personal business. This building was his office and Vernon managed Elvis's personal finance and the Graceland's maintenance, grounds and staffing. This is also where all the fan mail was sent. Elvis would often sit at the sofa on the left here and read fan mail. Another of the outbuildings is Elvis's trophy building, which has been newly updated to tell the personal story of Elvis, his family and the Graceland mansion. Here's the family tree, but also in here is Elvis's and Priscilla's wedding outfits, Lisa's childhood toys and mementos, Elvis's keys to Graceland and much, much more. The final building is the racquetball building, which has recently been beautifully restored to its 1977 condition. In the early hours of the morning Elvis died, he played racquetball with his fiancée Ginger Alden, his first cousin Billy Smith and Billy's wife Jo. After the game he sung them three songs on this piano, two gospel songs and the ballad Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. He walked back to the main house, washed his hair and retired to bed. A few hours later he was found by Ginger, unresponsive on the floor of his ensuite bathroom. Outside to the side of the mansion is the kidney-shaped swimming pool and patio that was installed in 1957, the year Elvis purchased the property. One of the most poignant and well-known areas of Graceland is the Meditation Garden. It was where he loved to sit and reflect, and today it is the final resting place for he, his parents Vernon and Gladys, and his paternal grandmother Minnie Mae Presley, who outlived them all until her death in 1980. There's also a memorial for his stillborn twin brother Jesse, and it's also where Lisa Marie's only son Benjamin is laid to rest, aged just 27, in 2020. An eternal flame marks the head of Elvis's grave. But the meditation garden was never meant to be a final resting place for any of the Presleys. On August the 18th, 1977, two days after his death, Presley was buried next to his late mother Gladys at Memphis Forest Hill Cemetery. An attempt was apparently made to steal his £900 steel-lined copper-plated coffin and hold his remains for ransom. Three men were arrested and, rather unfortunately, only charged with trespassing in the cemetery. To avoid a repeat of this rather macabre plan, both Elvis and Gladys were moved back to Graceland. The statue of Jesus and the two kneeling angels were also relocated here from the family burial plot at Forest Hill. Graceland was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1991 and it was in 2006 it was promoted to National Historic Landmark. As you can see, the mansion really is like a time capsule from the 1970s and we highly recommend a personal visit because that's not all that is here at Graceland. 
Now we're going to show you inside his lavish private aircraft, his car collection, and of course, some of his iconic costumes he wore on stage. Let's cross the road. Elvis purchased an ex-Delta Airlines 1958 Convair 880 in April 75 for 250,000 US dollars and named it Lisa Marie after his daughter. He nicknamed the aircraft his Flying Graceland and spent more than $800,000 having the jet customized to his own lavish specification. Notice the tail features an American flag and Elvis's famous TCB Taking Care of Business in a Flash logo. The Lisa Marie features a living room, conference room, sitting room and private bedroom, as well as gold-plated seat belt buckles, suede chairs and sofas in lush blues and greens, leather-covered tables, 24-karat gold flex sinks and two half baths. There's also a quadraphonic 8-track stereo system, a sky-to-ground phone system and other tech that was absolutely cutting edge in the 1970s. Also here at Graceland is Elvis's smaller Lockheed Jetstar, which he named Hound Dog 2. Hound Dog 1 was the Lisa Marie. Customised by Elvis with a yellow and green interior, it was mainly used for taking Elvis's manager and his entourage from city to city on his tours. But Elvis also loved to drive and loved his cars. Let's go and see some now. Inside one of the vast exhibition halls on the now sprawling 120-acre Graceland estate that stretches across the road from the mansion to a huge village of exhibits, museums, shops and eateries is Presley Motors, the collection of Elvis's notable vehicles that were made famous over the years. Here's a selection. This 1955 Cadillac Fleetwood 60 was a replacement for his 1954 Pink Cadillac, which he used to transport his band the Blue Moon Boys around the southern states before it caught fire and was destroyed. He later gifted this one to his mother Gladys, who couldn't even drive. It was 1956 and Elvis was in Houston, Texas, and was often the case his mind turned to shopping for cars. Having scored his first number one with Heartbreak Hotel, Elvis decided to treat himself and picked this Cadillac Eldorado. When he asked a salesman about it, the chap in question looked at Elvis with his quiffed hair, sideburns and blue suede shoes and dismissed him as a big time waster. Elvis then left the building and spotted a man washing cars behind the lot and asked him to accompany him back to the showroom and demanded to see the manager. He introduced himself, told the guy in charge he wanted to buy the Eldorado there and then, and that any commission due should go to the car cleaner, who had treated him like a gentleman. At the time, a Mark I Blackhawk cost just shy of £30,000, making it the most expensive car in the world. And during the first year of production, only 26 were made. Hmm, Elvis bought the first one, obviously. This Series 3 was his favourite though, because of its red leather interior and gold-plated trim. It was also the last car Elvis ever drove. He was photographed arriving at Graceland in the early hours of the 16th of August 1977 after a visit to the dentist. There's so much more to see at Graceland, so here's a selection of my favourite things, including a real Graceland approved peanut butter and banana sandwich, which was delicious by the way. Enjoy! Enjoy!